I hit go live, but as we know, that could be meaningless. It could be, it could be everything, it could be nothing. So should we start with the red-headed elephant in the room? Look at, look at, my hair's a different color. Uh, I felt like I needed to change. So I did this. Although now I'm just like second guessing the lipstick because I feel like pink with the red hair, it's auburn. But still, I, I feel like I should have gone for like full brick red. Maybe, I don't know. I think we're actually live now, like for, for realsies. All right, welcome to Tea and New Book Tuesday. I wish I could see the screen that you can see, but heaven forbid, there we go. I am Lisa, I'll be your librarian today. As always, I'm going to share books that have been pre-ordered from Mobile Public Library and should be coming in September. They are already in the catalog. You can put them on hold at your leisure. Uh, if you're super excited about them, put them on hold today and you'll have the best chance of being one of the first people to check out the book when it arrives at the library. So we begin as we always begin with a giveaway, which gets bigger and bigger. But because it has been so big, I've ended up with a lot of books that I kind of put in a reject pile, even though, even though I don't know that they're fully rejected, which is why I kind of wanted to present them again. The rules are gonna be different for these the pile is this high. Task is here, books are here. Um, I'm gonna let you go ahead and pick multiple titles if there are multiple titles that you want. So you can pick two or three. Uh, you can just pick one if you only see one you like. And if you don't want anything, that's okay. Uh, um, always, we have to control our to be read piles and we have to weed our books. I certainly need to go through and weed my cookbooks because they've gotten out of control. Uh, so yeah, if you don't want anything free, because you've already seen these, you're like, no, I do have a book that isn't out yet. It was already on today's list that I have an advanced reader copy of. So when we get to that book, I'll talk about that book and hold it up. Um, but there's only one of that book. There's actually one, only one of all of these. Um, so we'll see if any of you want that. But for these older titles, if you want more than one, that's fine. I do need your MPL location for pickup so I know where to send the book. The timing is gonna be weird this time because I am going on vacation or kind of a long weekend trip uh, so I will be out Thursday and Friday and Monday. So I'm going to send out whatever comes through today. I'll send out whatever I see on the Facebook comments tomorrow. If you end up commenting Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, it's totally fine. You can still ask for books, but you're not going to get a response from me until Tuesday morning. And that's probably when I will send the books out. So you don't have to run to the library for those. But if you are watching live this morning, then you can put something in and I will send it to you as soon as I can. And of course, if you're coming down to Maine, you can pick it up like by 11.45 or 11.55. I get them up there fast enough. All right, so here's the books to choose from today. I'm only gonna read little blurbs about them because they're just way too many for me to give you a full description. But this is Good Husbandry, Growing Food, Love and Family, on Essex Farm, which is by the author of The Dirty Life. She describes the delicious highs and somewhat excruciating lows of running a 500 acre farm that feeds a community of 250 people. So that's good husbandry. I'll put these away. I go through them so I have room to move because tables full of books. All right, next up, Red Island House from National Book Award nominated writer, Andrea Lee, an epic, gorgeously evocative novel about love and identity following two decades in the marriage between an African-American professor and her wealthy Italian husband as it unfolds on the remote and mysterious island of Madagascar. That's Red Island House. Moving on, we have A Good Marriage. This riveting novel from the New York Times bestselling author of Reconstructing Amelia, A Woman's Brutal Mur Murder, reveals this perilous compromises some, some couples make and the secrets they keep in order to stay together. That's a good marriage. Looks like a mystery. 
Girl Decoded is a captivating memoir by an Egyptian American scientist and CEO providing an intimate view of her personal transformation as she follows her calling to humanize technology. So that's Girl Decoded. The very well named, what would you do if you weren't afraid? Discovering a life filled with purpose and joy through the secrets of Jewish wisdom. I think that pretty much describes it with the nonfiction it often does. So what would you do if you weren't afraid? Next up, Home Waters, a chronicle of family and river. In the spirit of his father's beloved classic, A River Runs Through It, comes John N. McLean's me meditation on fly fishing and life along Montana's Blackfoot River, where four generations of McLeans have fished, bonded, and drawn timeless lessons from its storied waters. So that's Home Waters. I'm not sure I even remember what this is about, but it's called Vibrant, a groundbreaking program to get energized, own your health, and glow. So that's sort of wellness self-help with recipes and things. That's called Vibrant. The Calcium Connection, the little known enzyme at the root of your cellular health. So another sort of helping medical kind of book. What We Carry, I presented this last week, um, but it's for fans of Caroline Levitt. This complex novel born of the author's own loss and grief about how we overcome tragedy through bravery and self-discovery. So that's what we carry. Ooh. All right. Lead from the outside by Stacey Abrams. How to build your future and make real change, which is exactly what it says it is. How Stella learned to talk. This is the um, speech language pathologist who taught her dog to, do to talk with buttons. I'm surprised nobody wanted this one, but maybe you do. I don't know. I'm sure it's interesting. Anyway. Moving on, um, the day that went missing on a family's summer vacation in Cornwall in 1978, Richard and his younger brother, Nicholas, are jumping in the waves. Suddenly, Nicholas is out of depth. One minute he's there, the next minute he's gone. So this is a memoir. This is nonfiction. But the day that he, the day that went missing, yes, the day that went missing, oh, straying from an extravagantly gifted writer who deserves to be wildly read, this intimate, quietly stunning novel tells the story of an American expat who settles in Ireland in the late 80s, marries, and lives through the consequences of an affair. Straying. Next up, Elizabeth Warren. It's pretty much a straightforward biography of her, her fight, her work, her life. That one. The Compton Cowboys, a rising New York Times reporter tells the compelling story of the Compton Cowboys, a group of African-American men and women who defy stereotypes and continue their proud centuries old tradition of black cowboys in the heart of one of America's most notorious cities. There we go, that one. The Cave Dwellers, a compellingly readable novel in the vein of the bonfire of the vanities by way of the nest about what Washington DC's high society members do away from the Capitol building and behind closed doors in their suburban mansions. That's the cave dwellers. And one last one, Hummingbird Salamander from the author of Annihilation, a brilliant speculative thriller of dark conspiracy, endangered species, and the possible end of all things. So that's Hummingbird Salamander and there is one more book we're going to get into that I have that is an advanced reader copy. But let's share slides and start talking about. Oop, did I hit something? Things went beep. It's very concerning when things go beep. Let me share my screen so I can pull up what you want to look at. September books on the Facebook Live. Here we go. Boom. All right, so today's theme for the books we're gonna talk about is basically hits. So a lot of these are books that are gonna end up on the new book flyer. I've taken off things that are series updates. I will do a discussion board post 
on Goodreads that covers those. Uh, I don't do them on this because I feel like I have to introduce the entire series, which is kind of a lot. So instead, we're just going to talk about the standalones that look really promising and have a lot of critical acclaim and introduction. Beginning, oh, things we've done. We've talked about give it, giveaways, and now we're going to talk about September hits. So we're going to get into Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dewar. Okay, this is also the advanced reader copy I have. So if one of you wants Cloud Cuckoo Land, tell me that and then give me your MPL location for pickup and I will send it out for you. Here's what the book's about. Set in Constantinople in the 15th century in a small town in present day Idaho and on an interstellar ship decades from now, Anthony Dewar's gorgeous third novel is a triumph of imagination and compassion a soaring story about children on the cusp of adulthood in worlds in peril, who find resilience, hope, and a book. In Cloud Cuckoo Land, Dewar has created a magnificent tapestry of times and places that reflect our vast interconnectedness with other species, with each other, with those who have lived before us, and with those who will be here after we're gone. 13-year-old Anna, an orphan, lives inside the formidable walls of Constantinople in a house of women who make their living embroidering the robes of priests. Restless, insatiably curious, Anna learns to read, and in this ancient city, famous for its libraries, she finds a book, the story of a Theon, who longs to be turned into a bird so he can fly to a utopian paradise in the sky. This she reads to her alien, ailing sister as the walls of the only place she has known are bombarded in the great siege of Constantinople. Outside the walls is Omir, a village boy, boy, miles from home, conscripted with his beloved oxen into the invading army. His path and Anna's will cross. 500 years later, in a library in Idaho, octogenarian Zeno, who learned Greek as a prisoner of war, rehearses five children in a play, play adaptation of a Theon story, preserved against all odds through the centuries. Tucked among the library shelves is a bomb planted by a troubled idealistic teenager, Seymour. This is another siege. And in a not so distant future, on the interstellar ship Argos, Constance is alone in a vault, copying on scraps of sacking the story of Atheon, told to her by her father. She has never set foot on our planet. Like the main characters in all the light we cannot see, Anna, Omir, Seymour, Zeno, and Constance are dreamers and outsiders who find resourcefulness and hope in the midst of gravest danger. Their lives are gloriously intertwined. Dewar's dazzling imagination transports us to worlds so dramatic and immerse that we forget for a time our own. Dedicated to, quote, the librarians then, now, and in years to come, end quote, Cloud Cuckoo Land is a beautiful and redemptive novel about stewardship of the book, of the earth, of the human heart. This book already has starred reviews from Publishers Weekly, Kirkus, and Bookless. It, we are also buying it on audio if you're interested in the audiobook. But if you're interested in Cloud Cuckoo Land, you can put it in the comments below and I'll send it to you, or you can put it on hold. It comes out September 28th. All right, moving on to Don Winslow's City on Fire. Two criminal, criminal empires together control all of New England. Until a beautiful day, modern Helen of Troy comes between the Irish and the Italians, launching a war that will see them kill each other, destroy an alliance, and set a city on fire. Danny Ryan yearns to be, yearns for a more legit life and a place in the sun. But as the bloody conflict stacks body on body and brother turns against brother, Danny has to rise above himself. To save the friends he loves, for, to save the friends he loves like family and the family he has sworn to protect, he becomes a leader, a ruthless strategist, and a master of a treacherous game in which the winners live and the losers die. From the gritty streets of Providence to the glittering screens of Hollywood to the golden casinos of Las Vegas, Danny Ryan will forge a destiny. Exploring the classic themes of loyalty, betrayal, and honor, City on Fire is a contemporary Iliad, a saga that spans generation, a towering achievement of storytelling genius 
from Don Wislow, America's Greatest Living Crime Writer. This already got starred reviews from both Kirkus and Publishers Weekly. We are buying it on audiobook as well. If you are interested in City on Fire, it comes out September 21st. All right, moving on here. The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell. 2017, 19-year-old Tallulah is going on a date leaving her baby with her mother, Kim. Kim watches her daughter leave, and as late evening turns into night, which turns into early morning, she waits for her return and waits. The next morning, Kim phones Tallulah's friends, who tell her that Tallulah was last seen heading to a party at a house in the nearby woods called Dark Place. She never returns. 2019, Sophie is walking in the woods near the boarding school where her boyfriend has just started work as a head teacher when she sees a note fixed to a tree. It says, dig here. A cold case, an abandoned mansion, family trauma and dark secrets lie at the heart of Lisa Jewell's remarkable new novel. We will also be getting this on audio. Uh, Lisa Jewell has a lot of fans. I know a lot of people like her. If you're interested in The Night She Disappeared, it comes out September 7th. All right, moving on to the one that is virtually guaranteed to be a hit. I don't know what's happening in the world and why everybody's going boop on my phone, but I'm betting it's them telling me I'm gonna to need to go live at 11 o'clock, which is always nice. Um, I'm betting this one's going to be a hit and already has some critical acclaim, but will probably end up on the best, best books of the year. It's Harlem Shovel by Colson Whitehead. In case you don't know, Colson Whitehead has two Pulitzer Prizes for fiction, and he got them for Underground Railroad and then for Nickelback Boy. And those books were together. Not, I'm not explaining this very well. He published Underground Railroad. The next book he published was Nickel, Nickelback Boys or Nickel Boys. Anyway, so he got two Pulitzers for fiction essentially in a row. Uh, this is his his next book after those two. So everyone's very hyped up and excited about it. It is a heist story. So to the customers and neighbors on 125th Street, Carney is an upstanding salesman of reasonably priced furniture, making a decent life for himself and his family. He and his wife, Elizabeth, are expecting their second child. And if her parents on Strivers Row don't approve of him or their cramped apartment across from the subway tracks, is still home. Few people know he descends from a line of uptown hoods and crooks and that his facade of normalcy has more than a few cracks in it. Cracks that are getting bigger all the time. Cash is tight, especially with all those installment plan sofas. So if his cousin Eddie occasionally drops off the odd ring or necklace, Ray doesn't ask where it's from. He knows a discreet jeweler downtown who doesn't ask questions either. Then Freddy falls in with a crew who plan to rob Hotel Teresa, the Waldorf of Harlem, and volunteers raise services as their fence. The heist doesn't go as planned. They rarely do. Now Ray has a new clientele, one made up of shady cops, vicious local gangsters, two-bit pornographers, and other assorted Harlem lowlifes. Thus begins the internal tussle between Ray the Striver and Ray the Crook. As Ray navigates this double life, he begins to see who actually pulls the strings in Harlem. Can Ray avoid getting killed, save his cousin, and grab his share of the big score, all while maintaining his reputation as a go-to source for all your quality home furniture needs? Harlem Shuffle's ingenious story plays out in a beautifully recreated New York City of the 1960s. It's a family saga masquerading as a crime novel, a hilarious morality play, a social novel about race and power, and ultimately a love letter to Harlem. This already has starred review from Booklist and Kirkus. Um, the good thing, I've read Underground Railroad. I haven't read the other one he won, for, uh, the second Pulitzer for. The thing that is so fantastic about Colson Whitehead is that a lot of these big prizes, the Pulitzer, um, the Man Book Prize, the, is that what that's called? I don't know. The, the really, really prestigious ones. 
they're given by people who love literary fiction and they give them out to literary fiction, which if you love literary fiction, great. Um, I don't, and I don't necessarily think, I don't like the tendency towards academia and the critics to decide that all literary fiction is gold that is going to turn into a classic. That's not the case in any genre. So I don't see any reason it would be the case in literary, but I digress. My point is Colson Whitehead just writes a good story. It's literary in the sense that it's very descriptive, but he also weaves a gorgeous, tightly wound little plot in there too. His characterizations are stellar and the book Underground Railroad is tense. Like you are flipping through pages just wanting to know what's gonna happen next through the whole beginning of the, that book, which is a rare thing for a literary novel. My argument is that Whitehead is getting like declared to be literary because he's so good. The end of the day, he describes this as, as a heist novel. And I think that's accurate. And other people are describing it as historical fiction, which actually, I think that's the genre he really belongs in. Um, but he's winning awards not because he's in the genre that gets praise all the time, but because he does what he does so well. Um, so don't let the fact that he's won the Hoity Toity Awards deter you from this. If you really enjoy historical fiction and you wanna read about Harlem in the 1960s, I would absolutely get this book. Uh, we're also getting it on audio, if you'd like an audiobook. If you're interested in Harlem Shuffle, it comes out September 14th. Have I given you guys my whole spiel on audiobooks? I don't know if I have. So let's take a minute and I will do that. Audiobooks are reading. And that sounds like an obvious statement to most of you, hopefully. And to a few of you, it's like, well, no. Audiobooks are reading. Can't emphasize that enough. You're getting this from a librarian who got it from a neurologist. The process of understanding a story, whether you read it or you hear it, is extremely simpler. There are minor cognitive differences. They are not meaningful. So however you read books, whether you read them as a physical book or you listen to them as an audiobook, you are a reader. Don't, don't let anyone tell you you're not. The question that the, the blog post by the neurologist who was explaining this, he, the question that he had posed to him was, are audiobooks cheating? And he's like, I hate this question. I hate this question for a list of reasons. Here are they, <laughs> here they are. One, it implies reading is supposed to be hard. Reading really isn't supposed to be hard. That's why we teach it to children so that you'll kind of automatically do it when you see words when you're older, which it's easier for me now, but when I was younger, somebody had said, try to not read. Like try to see words and not read because your brain just automatically does it once you're you know, at a certain level of literacy. Um, that was true when I was 25. Now that I wear glasses and things are fuzzier, I cannot read things, but it's not, it's, it's not by choice, I promise you. <laughs> I have wandered off topic and I'm not entirely sure what I was gonna talk about other than um, if you like audiobooks, uh, Tell anybody who tells you you're not reading to go to hell. You can say it nicer if you like. You can say it meaner if you like too. But don't let it stop you. Okay, moving on. Have I moved on? Yes, we're on the next slide. Okay, The Magician by Colm Tolbein. Colm Tolbein's new novel opens in a provincial German city at the turn of the 20th century, where the boy, Thomas Mann, grows up with a conservative father bound by propriety and a Brazilian mother, alluring and unpredictable. Young man hides his arti artistic aspirations from his father and his homosexual desires from everyone. He is infatuated with one of the richest, most cultured Jewish families in Munich and marries the daughter Katya. They have six children. On holiday in Italy, he longs for a boy he sees on a beach and writes the story, Death in Venice. He is the most successful sexful. He is the most successful novelist of his time, winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature, 
a public man whose private life remains secret. He is expected to lead the condemnation of Hitler, whom he underestimates. His oldest daughter and son, leaders of Bohemianism and of the anti-Nazi movement, share lovers. He flees Germany for Switzerland, France, and ultimately America, living first in Princeton and then in Los Angeles. The Magician is an intimate, astonishingly complex portrait of man, his magnificent and complex wife, Katya, and the times in which they lived. The First World War, the First World War, the rise of Hitler, World War II, the Cold War, and exile. This got starred reviews from Booklist, Publishers Weekly, and Kirkus. If you are interested in The Magician, it comes out September 7th. All right, Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. She is the best-selling author of Normal People and Conversations with Friends. Alice, a novelist, meets Felix, who works in a warehouse, and asks, asks him if he'd like to travel to Rome with her. In Dublin, her best friend Eileen is getting over a breakup and slips back into flirting with Simon, a man she has known since childhood. Alex, Felix, Eileen, and Simon are still young, but life is catching up with them. They desire each other. They delude each other. They get together. They break apart. They have sex. They worry about sex. They worry about their friendships and the world they live in. Are they standing in the last lighted room before the darkness, bearing witness to something? Will they find a way to believe in a beautiful world? This got a starred review from Publishers Weekly. We are also buying it on audio. If you're interested in Beautiful World, Where Are You? It comes out September 7th. Our final book of the day, Apples Never Fall by Leanne Moriarty, very popular author. If your mother was missing, would you tell the police? Even if the most obvious suspect was your father. This is the dilemma the four grown Delaney siblings face. The Delaney's are fixtures in their community. The parents, Stan and Joy, are envies of all their friends. They're killers on the tennis court and off it, their, their chemistry is palpable. But after 50 years of marriage, they've finally sold their famed tennis academy and are ready to start what should be the golden years of their lives. So why are Stan and Joy so miserable? The four Delaney children, Amy, Logan, Troy, and Brooke, were tennis stars in their own right. Yet as their father will tell you, none of them had what it takes to go all the way. But that's okay now that they're all successful grown-ups and there is a wonderful possibility of grandchildren on the horizon. One night, a stranger named Savannah knocks on Stan and Joy's door, bleeding after a fight with her boyfriend. The Delaney's are more than happy to give her the small kindness she sorely needs. If only that was all she wanted. Later, when Joy goes missing and Savannah is nowhere to be found, the police question the one person who remains, Stan. But for someone who claims to be innocent, he, like many spouses, seems to have a lot to hide. Two of the Delaney children think their father is innocent. Two are not so sure. But as the two sides square off against each other in perhaps their biggest match ever, all of the Delaney's will start to re-examine their shared family history in a very new light. This got a starred review from Kirkus Magazine. We are also getting it on audiobook. If you're interested in Apples, Never Fall, comes out September 14th. Next week, we are going to talk about Yellow Labels, which is mystery, thriller, and suspense that are coming out in September. If you want to know more preview of more things that are going to be on the new book flyer, particularly the series updates or standalones that I decided not to talk about for whatever reason, I will put a discussion board on our Goodreads group. I'll probably have that up by the end of the day, hopefully. Um, if you would like to win one of the piles of books I got that I read earlier, I need the title of the book and your location for pickup. You can ask for, let's say up to three, two or three, one or two or three, whatever you want. Um, but don't forget the MPL location for pickup. And of course you can subscribe to our newsletter using the link below. Let's go ahead and get out of this so we can say goodbye, stop sharing. All right, guys, I will be back next week. I will see you then. Goodbye.